Welcome to the Become a Writer Today podcast with Brian Collins. Here you'll find practical advice and interviews for all kinds of writers. Would you like to create an audiobook? Hi there, my name is Brian Collins, and in 2017, I spent approximately a month turning the art of writing a non fiction book into an audiobook. Then I worked with a producer and self-published that audiobook on ACX, which is Amazon's platform for selling and distributing your audiobooks. I found the process really enjoyable, but it was also a little bit time consuming in that I had to record all of the audio and work directly with a producer to ensure it was just right before I could publish on ACX. Then I heard that you can actually use ACX to find narrators and producers who will do most of the heavy lifting for you provided, of course, that you've written a book. So for my other book, which is called The Power of Creativity, I used Audible to find a narrator and producer, Ben Caudry. Ben is based in the UK and he worked with me to narrate The Power of Creativity and then to edit the audio files and prepare them for production on Audible. I recently published that book on Audible and the process was a lot faster than when I did it myself. So in this podcast episode, I'd like to share with you one of the chapters which Ben narrated and produced for me from The Power of Creativity. If you'd like to read The Power of Creativity or get the audiobook, just visit thepowerofcreativitybook.com. Now I'll hand it over to Ben, who's going to narrate a chapter of this book. 5. Find a creative master. No one is really going to help you or give you direction. In fact, the odds are against you. Robert Greene. Stop it. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. You might think your problems are special, unique, or impossible for anyone else to understand. But you know what? We're all struggling with the same basic creative problems. You're not the only one who struggles, wants to think outside the box, needs motivation to keep going, or craves critical feedback about their work. You're not the only one who spends hours tinkering with your ideas and still hates them. And you're not the only one who'll do anything, clean the bathroom, service the car, run a marathon to avoid sitting your ass in the chair and doing the work. Almost every creative person faces problems like procrastination, perfectionism and self-doubt at one time or another, even the successful ones. But the feeling of being utterly alone on your artist's journey is insidious. It gnaws at your confidence and weakens your resolve. It causes talented writers to give up when all they need to do is keep going. And that needs to stop right now. Your map. Imagine the scene. You're driving along a deserted road. You haven't seen another car, another person, or even a road sign in hours. The car's old engine has been making a strange rattling sound since you left home, and each time you hit another pothole, you think the engine might drop right out. Regardless, you push your fears aside, sit up straight in your seat, and keep driving. Because while your destination is not on any map, Others have told you it's worth the journey. But it'll be dark soon, and the fuel gauge is straying dangerously close to empty. A while back, when my fuel gauge was close to empty, I came across advice from the recently departed American historical author E. L. Doctorow, 1931-2015. He once said, Writing is like driving at night in the fog. You can only see as far as your headlights, but you can make the whole trip that way. It's a powerful metaphor and one you can apply to playing music, painting, drawing or most kinds of creative work. But if you're anything like me, you hate feeling lost. You can't stand the sense that you might be on the wrong track, leaving a trail of wasted time and effort. Like anyone who works with ideas, I long for road markings or helpful directions from someone who has completed the same journey before me. Seek help from past masters. The mentor-student relationship is an age-old one. By the 13th century, a young person in Western Europe who aspired to become a blacksmith, carpenter, or even an artist served an apprenticeship. He or she worked for a master craftsman from age 15 onwards in exchange for food, board, and instruction. An apprenticeship lasted about seven years, and once complete, the young person could work as a journeyman or day labourer for wages. Apprentices who aspired to become masters had to create a great work approved by the town guild and pay the group a hefty fee. As a master, they could take on apprentices and teach their skills. 
Apprenticeships were expensive and sought after, and many of them never acquired a workshop of their own or became masters. Today, having a mentor offers opportunities to learn a creative skill faster and gain access to the creative insight and resources of those who have gone before you. Many modern-day creative masters sought the help of mentors to guide their careers. For example, American writer Stephen King, born 1947, attributes the success of his many books to his wife, Tabby, who is also a writer. He shows Tabby early drafts of his books and asks her about tone, what he should put in and take out. King counts on her as the one person who will say that he's working too hard or that he should slow down. It was Tabby who picked an earlier version of his first novel, Carrie, that agents rejected, out from the waste paper basket. She told a young and disillusioned King there was something in his story. He wrote, Tabby wanted me to go on with it. She wanted to know the rest of the story. You've got something here, she said. I really think you do. An ideal creative mentor takes more than a passing interest in your work. These mentors want you to grow and develop as a creative person, and they will instruct you in their chosen art. A mentor will show you how to avoid committing common mistakes and help you learn the skills of your creative trade faster. They will expose you to higher levels of creative thinking and provide you with critical feedback beyond what your friends, family, readers, listeners or critics offer. You will become more accomplished and creative if you have a mentor to guide you. But how can you find a mentor and what should you do once you've found one? Distinguish between good and great mentors. I spent my twenties trying and failing to earn a living as a successful Irish journalist. I would have given almost anything for a more experienced journalist to take an interest in the course of my career and show me what to do and what to avoid. I was prepared to strike a Faustian pact, if you will. Several of my classmates from journalism college worked with editors and more experienced colleagues who took an interest in their careers, but I always found it difficult to settle in a newspaper or radio station. I grew resentful and was happy to tell people outside of the profession that most journalists were unhelpful. I'd failed to see the big problem behind my petty resentments. During a career, people have many kinds of mentors. There are good mentors and great mentors. The former is easy to acquire, while the latter is an elusive prize. Good mentors are the teachers and instructors in your local creative writing, music or film class. They are respected colleagues in the workplace or even some of your friends. Even more importantly, they can help you advance your creative career faster even if you work with or follow that mentor for just a little while. The good news is it's relatively easy to find a good mentor. A more experienced colleague that you can trust can serve this role for a time, although you might not want to label the relationship. Or you can hire a teacher or instructor to work directly with you. Great mentors are fewer and farther between, and harder to find. They are creative masters whose work keeps you up at night because it's so damn good. So how can you find a great mentor? If that person is still living and working, figure out how you could be useful to them. Try to look at the world through the gaze of your mentor, asking yourself, what does he or she need most? Transform yourself into someone with skills that complement their work. Yes, this means you're going to have to work for free. I know giving away your time for nothing is troubling, but I'd like to reframe what you're doing as a trade, your time, for access to their expertise. Great mentors almost always complain about a lack of free time. One great way to hook their attention is to do something that gives your would-be mentor more hours to spend. If you're a writer, for example, you could offer to write an article or a blog post for their website. You can also work with great mentors as part of a group. Let's say you're a musician. You and several of your peers could sign up for a workshop or retreat with a talented musician during which your mentor provides you and the rest of the group critical feedback over a couple of days. You can also short-circuit this process if you're prepared to either pay a great mentor for one-on-one feedback or if you shift your definition of the student-mentor relationship. Your Council of Mentors What I'm going to tell you next makes me sound crazy. I talk to dead people. No, I'm not referring to ghosts or strangers who haunt my house. I talk to American novelist and short story writer John Cheever, 1912-1914. 
1982. Known as the Chekhov of the suburbs, he wrote five novels and a number of short story collections during his creative career. Six weeks before his death, Cheever was awarded the National Medal for Literature by the American Academy of Arts and Letters. He died in 1982, when I was only a year old. So if I never met Cheever and he died when I was a baby, how can he be one of my creative mentors? Several years ago, I read The Journals of John Cheever, a book that gave me insight into his creative process. Then I read several of Cheever's novels, as well as books by writers who influenced him. Tracing the roots of his big ideas helped me understand why Cheever made some of his creative choices and gave me more of a feeling for what inspired him as a writer. For a long time afterwards, when faced with a creative challenge, I visualized Cheever and asked him, what would you do? Now his manifesto guides me. To write well, to write passionately, to be less inhibited, to be warmer, to be more self-critical, to recognize the power of, as well as the force, of lust, to write, to love. I'm aware this makes me sound quite mad, but it's a creative process that American author Napoleon Hill, 1883-1970, to recommended in his seminal book, Think and Grow Rich. He suggested keeping an imaginary council every night that you consult when you have a problem or need advice. He wrote, Just before going to sleep at night, I would shut my eyes and see in my imagination this group of men seated with me around my council table. I had a very definite purpose in indulging my imagination through these nightly meetings. My purpose was to rebuild my own character so it would represent a composite of the characters of my imaginary counsellors. Hill's council comprised nine of his mentors, including Thomas Edison and Charles Darwin, people Hill never met. There's no psychological trickery behind his approach either. Instead, push yourself to learn from every possible source that your imaginary mentor offers. Read the books they cite, listen to what inspired them, and trace the roots of their creative work until you unearth their influences. Be rigorous about applying what your mentor has to teach. Be selective. What if you're working with a mentor who got lucky or one who doesn't know what they are doing? What if their teachings are stale and out of date? What if your values clash with theirs? Before you select your creative mentor, research your needs and their qualities thoroughly. To find out if a creative mentor is suitable, write a list of your weaknesses, needs and areas where you need improvement. Perhaps you need help playing musical scales, adding texture to your paintings or weaving stories into your works. Or maybe you're struggling to learn from each of your practice sessions. Or perhaps you need help with the tactics of your craft, and so on. Find a mentor who is farther along the path you're walking, or turn towards a mentor who has mastered one of your obvious deficiencies. They must be able to help you address the areas where you need help. Read everything about your potential mentor and find critics of their work, so you can assess whether the relationship will work. It's best to discover the potential flaws of your would-be mentor before you've invested a significant amount of time, money, and creative resources following their path. Once you spend money or time on a mentor, this sunken cost complicates turning away from their teachings, even if it's foolish to throw good money after bad. When you are selecting a mentor, consider your psychology. Ask honest questions about your tolerance for risk and failure. Many creative masters take bold and dramatic risks on the path towards success and fail hard before they achieve their goals. Stephen King's novel Carrie was rejected 30 times before his wife fished it out of the bin. Walt Disney was a creative visionary, but he spent much of his career teetering on the brink of bankruptcy and even voiced contempt for the financial backers who helped him out. J.K. Rowling wrote the first Harry Potter book while jobless, divorced, and raising a child alone. Do you have the stomach for these kinds of risks and failures? A great mentor doesn't have to become your friend, but you must be able to listen to them without feeling irritated or despondent. Consider how you will react to their beliefs, leadership style, way of thinking, systems, mannerisms, speech, and ideals. Remember, a great mentor will help you connect ideas in exciting ways, think on a higher level, and achieve your creative goals faster. Choose well. Burn your mentor's ideas into your own.
Read, watch, and listen to everything your mentor sends you, produces, or creates. Keep a file or a notebook and write down everything they have to teach you and review regularly what you've learned from them. Whenever you face a decision about how to spend your time or resources, use your mentor's teachings to guide you. Ask them questions and, if possible, get them to review your work and provide critical feedback. Do what they tell you and put as much of their teachings into practice as you can at the expense of advice you hear elsewhere. The fire of your mentor's teachings should temper you so that you can face external ideas and challenges without becoming overwhelmed. At first, your mentor's advice might seem odd and even against your better instincts. But remember, your mentor knows far more about the creative journey you're both on. Later, when you start to achieve results, you can bring more of your experiences and knowledge into your chosen creative field. Nothing lasts forever. There will come a point where you must develop self-reliance and strike out on your own. It will naturally arrive if you've hired a mentor to work with you for a predetermined period or if they're working with you in a more distanced capacity. Be sure you're both prepared to make the break. If you are working directly with your mentor and have hooked their attention, they might become dependent on you and even hold you back. They might want to keep you within the fold because they need you or even because they are afraid you will outshine them. If this happens, remember the goal of any mentoring relationship isn't lifelong friendship. Your creative work must come first. Prepare for the journey ahead. The road at the beginning of any creative journey appears long and mysterious. Realising you've got only a vague idea of where you're going or wondering if you're going to reach your destination soon is never pleasant. Yes, the look of your journey will be different from the next person's, but make no mistake, you are not the first person to embark on this creative path. Many others are willing to show you the way if you have the guts to ask. Follow the path that writers, artists, painters, filmmakers and creative masters have walked before you. The next time you encounter a creative problem, ask yourself what would your mentor do? As you become more skilled at your craft, start questioning some of your mentor's ideas and teachings. Challenge your mentor. They might not like this pushback and many mentor-student relationships end acrimoniously. However, if you go into this type of relationship with your eyes open, you will be prepared for the inevitable end of the mentor-student relationship. When you reach this crossroad, look for another, better mentor to guide you. Say to yourself, onwards! You can draw on the strengths of one mentor to offset the weaknesses of the next. It's why writers work with more than one editor during their career, and it's why musicians move from one producer to the next. By tapping into the knowledge of multiple experts, You will fashion yourself into a creative person other people seek out. By going from one creative mentor to the next, you will combine the teachings of various teachers with your unique ideas and creative voice. This combination of the accomplished and the new will help you grow into an exciting and fresh creative talent. You just have to be brave enough to keep going. Creative Takeaways Write down a hit list of people you would like to have as your creative mentor. Remember, they can be alive, dead, accessible, or inaccessible. Next time you face a creative challenge, visualize your mentor and ask, what would they do? I hope you enjoyed this podcast episode. If you did, please leave a rating on the iTunes store. And if you want to accomplish more with your writing, please visit becomearitertoday.com forward slash join and I'll send you a free email course. Thanks for listening.